This is a big one today, man, and I think this book is going to be kayfabe affected for sure. The Takao Saito Works Duke Togo History. It's a Google 13 Artist Edition book. Welcome to your favorite YouTube channel, Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. This was on the shelves of uh, Koenji Shaw, Japan Book Hunters bookshelves, and I scooped it up immediately. It had to become an episode. But first, I got to let everybody know that we are a daily YouTube channel, and we have more than 1,600 videos in our coffers to date. Might have talked about your favorite comics, so hit the magnifying glass on the front page of the Cartoonist Kayfabe YouTube channel and check out those episodes when we talk about your faves. We have a Patreon, and I already hipped the King K Fabers on the Patreon in our live stream to scoop this book up if they have the least bit of interest in it because it is going to go fast on the aftermarket. Uh, that is the benefit of being a part of our Patreon. The King K Fabers get our live streams before anybody else, and we deliver them all of the uh, complete edited videos uh, before they hit Gen Pop. Jimmy, without further ado, I just cracked the seal off of this bitch, man. I've had it for a week in the United States. I had it maybe for another uh, week or two in Japan, and I haven't really looked at it, man. Yeah, I don't appreciate this tease, Ed. Let's get inside here. <laughs> well, it's such a good cover, right? So I have to see like, wow, how everything Wow, that is amazing. Looks. That's all amazing. I love the actual hardcover art. Right. Really beautiful, but wow, this is, uh, this is classic stuff. Well-designed book, for sure. Let's take Damn. a look at the back just for fun. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, this may be a kayfabe effect for me. Yeah, I because recommend this it. is spectacular. Man, I love that inside of the dust jacket. It's really a beautiful image. Yeah, dude, you use, use every every bit of the animal, or in this case, every bit of the tree, huh? Hey, it makes sense to me, but very few people do. It's true. Now we'll jump right in, dude. And already you could see some marginalia. You could see some. Uh, Watercolor, some color pencil being used. Yeah, I was going to say, you can see the texture of some pencil media on there. Hmm. This is beautiful, dude. Wow. This, this is the thing, too, man. Like, when you see color, it's all on the boards. It always is. I've seen probably six or seven um, comic book art shows in, in Tokyo. And it's not, you know, color guides and all the kind of mechanical fuss that we go through. It's all done right there on the boards. And here, here are your examples. What a book, man, already. What a book. Yeah, dude. I feel like I need to kill the King K. Faber link to this. <laughs> <laughs> the videos are brought to you by the books that we make, and we have a healthy selection of new materials for you uh, at this point in time. Jimmy has Street Angel Princess of Poverty hot on the stands. It is the companion piece to Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive. Princess of Poverty collects uh, Jimmy's pre-image comics, Street Angel comics, and you have both of these collections. You have all of his Street Angel comics to date. He's been self-publishing lately, and True Crime Funnies is one of his latest efforts where comics are concerned. There is the 1986 zine, there is the black and white zine, and uh, you'll be able to scoop those up at his website. The Hulk Grand Design Marvel Treasury Edition book is uh, technically out of print at this point, man. So uh, if you see it somewhere, scoop it up because you're not going to uh, have second dibs, a second shot at getting it anytime soon. The Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus is out there in the wild right now. Scoop it up. There's only about 25, 20% of uh, this book left on the stands. Coming to you in early 2024 is going to be Red Room Crypto Killers. It is the third part of the uh, Red Room Trilogy of comics each one is self-contained so give them all give anyone a shot check it out and uh you know give another one a shot if you dig it then there is x-men grand design trade paperback collecting all of my x-men grand design works in one handy dandy hard soft cover edition now that we are done paying the bills let's get back to the video wow i love seeing the color the color on these originals absolutely cheese and, and you know just hardcore kind of Wow. Yeah, dude. Brutal stuff. Now, he's already established because he has his own blue lines, but Google 13 is a massive institution, and it still continues. He, he passed away, I believe, last year, maybe the year before, but uh, Google 13 persists. It's it, There's still new ones out there. There's still Bunkos at the convenience store that have like 500 page, you know, greatest of collections. Look at how fascinating this is. This actually reminds me of some of Darwin Cook's Parker. 
stuff right. where you know, like he's doing a very limited color, but it's such a flat piece it almost looks like it's on that green paper, and then your cigarette and shirt color are added, which I think it is. I think is it that is. pasted down? Do you think? Uh, yeah, you could see a you could see a margin. Okay, that makes a lot of sense then. But the stuff he's doing with like dry brush around the hair in the ink, and then the smoke and cigarette, they look three dimensional. They do. Was not expecting so much color. This is, this makes me super happy to see. I love seeing like you know wet on wet watercolor or ink dyes possibly, but whatever it is, it's like wet media. You can see it kind of bleeding out there. Really exciting. Pretty psychedelic as far as Takao Saito goes. Yeah, you know, he's a pretty straight up creator, and uh, you could tell what's happening. This girl is fucking uh, dehydrated, man. And it looks kind of sus, right? Like she's trying to squirt some milk to drink or something. Yeah, like sure I have no idea in that what's, what's happening there. But I like the uh, the black and white and color. The alternate alternating across the page. It's pretty uh, interesting use of color. Now you know he's making the assistants do that part. I hope so. And then you get your process red stuff. You know where you see it's a mixture of ink wash, but also that process red kind of kind of ink. And there it is, dude. The classic. Um, logo piece pasted up boy they're stunners whenever you see the fine ink line too at this size it's remarkable how tight and actually small that inking is it's true now check this out jimmy and this is something i discovered uh when i visited shonen jump offices you see how there are clear pace-ups of full panels yes. that indicates usually that some of this is going to one assistant yeah. some of this is going to another and then we're going to stitch it up into uh, the, the final form because, you know, we're running up against deadlines or maybe uh, as we go, maybe this is just a common uh, procedure because I'm seeing a lot of paste-ups yeah. of almost every panel and stuff, which suggests that, you know, he runs a big operation. When, when you sell hundreds of millions of, of comics, he's got a building that has a Google 13 logo like built into it. There's a man bin and he has a giant staff. You know, you, you see all of it. It's fascinating to me to look at this stuff and think like when you look at something like this, it could almost be photo reference to a landscape photo or something. Yeah. But it's cartooning. It's such a cartoon. Right. Car you know, simplified, caricatured, you know, it's cartooning. It is. But it's also connected to this like illustration tradition. Now, here's the thing that we're not going to be able to answer probably, man. Like maybe, maybe you'll have some idea, but I certainly uh, do not. The reason why, one of the reasons why we separate our colors um is so that you know that like those files are a separate piece of paper so that it's just easy like your line art is pure black pure white yeah you don't have this kind of stuff how the fuck do they print this and not have these white outs not have the sh the little shadow of like your paste ups and stuff because it'll print like the way our stuff does except there will be value with the color and things but they somehow knock out all of the uh, extraneous nonsense. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's just an exposure thing. You know, it's probably a little higher exposure, so you're getting your black and your whites. So then here's this, right? Where this is certainly the same as that white out, right? So, yeah. like, how the fuck do they... They just have some other back-end fuss that they give. I think a lot about the red, okay? And I think they do it with a filter. You just put a, a, a red to knock it out and, you know in order to get your color separations in a mechanical process. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing that that very light red, you know, you could change your exposures to shoot the red. Yeah. That's my guess. Cool. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. I don't want to put my head into the camera, but I'm wondering if that's like a blow up of uh, something that was like drawn much smaller. Man, we're getting way more color than I thought we would get in here, which pretty much thrills me. Yeah, it makes me wonder, like, what his collection of the originals are. Does he have every single original? And if so, like, what is that? 10,000 color pages? Like, what would that equal? Did you see the man bin that was done um, about the Ashita Nojo creator? Mm -mm. So his studio, and he's still making comics. He's in the 90s. He's still making comics, and his studio is a, is a barn. So, you know, like, you climb the ladder and there's that thing where, like, all the hay is on the top. Where there's that little window up there. I don't know what that's... So, that part of the barn stacks of pages yeah. as, as high as the steeple of the fucking ceiling goes. It's also wild to me that you can create this image. And then, like, you can create Golgo 13, uh, you know, the an action dude running around with a rifle. Right. The, those two things seem so different. 
And uh, I mean, it, it is it is important to make mention that once again, Saito's system involves a lot of other people. Yep. So he's having somebody do this. Man, the storytelling of those skiers was some really great stuff. Yeah. Cool compositions. I love this kind of thing too, where you're like placing your figures above something. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's some previous panels like that. It's just really interesting. Yeah, playing with that rule of thirds stuff. It's rare that you see compositions like that with these super long straight up and down panels. This almost feels like uh, cinematic where it's like, okay, I'm zooming out, I'm zooming out, I'm zooming out, and then the the characters take off out of the uh, out of the focal point. Yeah. You know, like when you get these figures, they're so, I hate to say simplified, I don't think that captures exactly what I'm seeing there, but they are. Yeah, it's gestural. Yeah. And, and it doesn't look for, like my Japan strips are art filled. When I'm not checking out a comic book art show, I'm going to museums and I'm going to museums seeing, you know, the earliest, like ho Hokusai's and shit. And this kind of stuff is not far from what you see. Right. And it's even an isometric perspective type type stuff. So so this is there's a long tradition of this exact kind of drawing. It's just like you would see it with like Edo period garb. But it would be these kinds of drawings for sure. Really great point of view too, where like the point of view is not changing, right? Because we're looking through the binoculars. This right. is a point of view shot. So that truck is stationary. If we're seeing the truck and the binoculars, it's more or less the same. Yeah. Great stuff. Great attention to detail. And you notice that sort of theory I put together for myself about like the strong circle shape and, you, mm -hmm. you know, you only want to have one of those. Like he breaks them up. Yeah. Also, when you're putting this book together and you have 20,000 pages of Google -Go 13 from the 60s to 2023 or whenever this book was created, how the fuck do you choose, man? That's a great question. Surprise, that's color. That's a great variety so far. Wow. Breathtaking. Stunning. Not what I think of when I think Golga 13 either. No, not at all. Brilliant. A lot of white on top of your water texture to give you that kind of uh, rapids. I'll tell you, man, when I look at this, it is no mystery how this would be just a huge success. Yeah. You know, you can imagine, like, men's adventure fans. What could be better? There's no misstep here. And he is, he's like a, you, with a Mary Sue you know, where, like, he always gets his man type type guy and has no kryptonite. So uh, it's simple. You know, he's always going to get out of it. Right. And he's but always I mean, going to get his man. You know, it's Executioner. It's Destroyer. It is. It's, it's any of these characters where it's like, there's 130 volumes? And he precedes it. You know, like, he kind of set the template. Now, he did get the license to do um, James Bond comics, and it really is Duke Togo with a fucking jacket on. Yeah, of course. That's pretty neat. Yeah, another blow up. I, well, yeah, I bet you it'd blow up and, 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 and put on. It. I, I don't know how you're getting that texture without blowing it off. Yeah. All right, man. Awesome. 60s and 70s. Now we're getting some old stuff. That's cool, but it's great to now get into the black and white. Mm hmm. And it's about the halfway point of the book, I would say. What's cool about this, too, is that he has he's less established and, and, and probably has more of a hand on the page than the stuff that we've been looking at uh, already. So it's much more close to uh, the Takao Saito vision. It's also neat to see how stylized he is, you know, when you get into, like, faces and things. Absolutely. I, I mentioned it in um, a video that we that I did with uh, Japan Book Hunter and those guys were, like, this idea of, like, how he expresses the cheekbones. Um, you don't see anybody else do that. No. You know, to, to, like, choose to put that line there, those two lines. That's beautiful landscapes. <laughs> Gekiga, baby. Wow. That's a muscular lass. Great drawing, but that's a that's a scary face. Makes me wonder, like, what all is happening on this page? Like, mm -hmm. what's the finished page look like there? Right, yeah, because there might be some kind of a photostatic thing happening. Yeah, I think there's probably something. Wow, that's really nice. Look at the weird hatching. You know, like, right. who would think to do that kind of hatching? It's very organic shapes everywhere, and now we're doing, like, hard line uh, yeah like it, with like you know right angles and stuff and it, and it could flatten it out but there's like a weird fussiness to it that that works and then maybe uh, some airbrush it really makes me want artist editions of like every manga all of it <laughs> also pretty dense pages some of these yeah it's a lot of panels going on 
This feels like a shoujo inspired uh, little montage. Some straight up uh, ink wash. Mm -hmm. It looks very messy, and I bet you it prints so small. Yes. Like as a very tiny little spot illustration, so like the messiness doesn't matter. Yeah, great lighting. That's pretty fun. Yeah, dude. That's really odd. Like a marker marker drawing. Right. And just like dropping the paint, or, or like just, you know, coloring all over some random newspaper and then figuring out the collage of what it. What a contrast between these two pages. I would bet you that that's a photograph that is just inked over top of, and then you just pull out, like, abstract shapes and things. I wonder uh, about a lot of some of the lighting stuff, like if he's using some kind of reference. And then seeing him do these different materials, I, I, I'm shocked. I'm shocked by what is in this book. Yeah. Oh, dude, is that saying, like, uh, this is what it looked like in print? This is the size it was in print or something like that? Yeah, I guess. Oh, this is cool, man, giving us the cover over, color overlays and what the final printed piece look like. Yeah, that's awesome. This is interesting because, like, they don't have, you know, how we have the tipped-in um, yes. vellums and things. This is their their approach to, to that. Look at how macho he is, dude, with his clove cigarette. Doing some skiing, doing some swimming, fucking some chicks. Guns everywhere, muscles. Super macho, but also like almost crude drawing. Mm -hmm. You know, at times. At and times, then like right. other other parts will be like so elegant in the detail. <laughs> you know, like yeah, like like this this is like I've, I'm sure we're at that stage where like assistant one is drawing bats. <laughs> we have the guy who can, you know, not fidget for five hours doing this panel here. Uh, Takao Saito is inking in the, the eyebrows. Yeah, imagine the guy cross-hatching all of those clouds. It's like nine chain cigarettes, yes. you know? <laughs> Wakes, 45 minutes later, he's just got this, like, new mound growing out of his back from being <laughs> right. hunched over. Oh, that's cool, man. Just like a little piece of the yes. hand and a fucking gun coming out. That is that is brilliant. Terrific Way off silhouette. center. It's so evocative, dude. It really, it says a lot. Like, this is a cover. Like, you want to, you got to go inside that book and see what the fuck is about to happen. Yeah, as a cover, that would be spectacular. You know, like a little title. Yeah. Boom, good to go. Some Bruce Lee reference. I think so. <laughs> Absolutely. We all know the image. Because, like, uh, Neil Adams even used that same uh, photo for, the, for a magazine cover for Marvel. Yeah, Deadly Hands of Kung Fu, I think. That's it. I might have that. Wow. Using a weird apparatus to get these, these dots. Yeah, man, and it's down here too. What is that? So here's what I think it is, Jimmy. Because I, I got this tool off of Jason Shithead from, from, I think, Brooklyn, New York. And what it is, and I, you know, I just don't know the era, but if it's late enough, it's a little ruler with the dots. It's a ruler. And what it's for is to highlight stuff on faxes. You see? So, like, you could, like, rule it because the faxes are just black and white. So, uh, it's this ruler thing. And, like, you go over it a bunch of times and you could get value yeah. and stuff. Hmm. So, it would have to be from the 80s or later. I'm always impressed when you look at an artist who's very established and yet it seems like... Oh, they must have just got hold of this tool, and we're like, let's try, let's let's see what we can do with this. That's the thing that's dubious, because like, like you, we just got, you know, I said a million, like, it's not the same hand, you know. There's there's thirty, fifty, maybe a hundred people that we're seeing represented here. That's fair. So you got to kind of keep that in mind. This is a great effect, man. That is that is really something. That's an not necessarily observed here, but I mean that's it's an filmic. observable thing. Yeah, very filmic. Yeah, it's filmic, totally. You know, you see those glares. On, uh, and film, and how about that, dude? Underwater, mm -hmm. but then using these lines to kind of create some dimension, and that pose ain't nothing to sneeze at, dude. That's a fucking, that's a that's a that's an assassin hunch. The Stephen Platt version of shells in, uh, <laughs> in, in manga, right? Nice uh, chiaroscuro. I've seen a few of these silhouettes in this book so far, and they're all really great. This reminds me a lot of marker, felt felt marker on on this page. 
and him popping up like that, I mean, that's a horror movie. You know, it's the last thing that these victims see. Yeah, with no expression on his face. Never. That's so crucial that he just always has that stoic look. I love whenever we see these kinds of uh, color. They're not washes. I don't know what you, the word that's, is for I think that, that's a wash. It's like wet on wet. Yeah. Um, it's And that color, I mean, that's a very specific kind of treatment that you get like from the 70s. Now we're into the 90s. It would have been interesting to try to guess time periods because this does not look 90s-esque to me. Right. You know, clearly rooted in its origins. In the 90s, he's already into his uh, 40th year of his career. Yeah. So Google is already a major institution. The uh, the introduction to Google 13 for me, dude, I had the Nintendo game. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I scooped it up. It was, it was a value game, you know, like the ones that are on the $20 rack. And it was the line, and you know, the line drawing where I'm like, okay, it's com it's like comics, and it's a it's a good game. It's real good. There's fucking in it. Like when he gets his power back, you you meet a chick, and then you go up to the hotel, and it just shows the outside of the hotel, and it shows the two dots like in the window, like going together. But you know what's happening, and then he gets all his energy back. The I love negative these stuff. Thick, thick thick lines. Yeah, yeah. I just I would be so cool to know exactly how how tiny that produces because you know it does. Amazing for sure. It's almost like a monkey punch drawing. Great stuff. Great negative space. Yeah. This book did a good job of getting a wide variety of, I, think so. of uh, I guess, finishes and approaches. I think so. I feel like that's a classic pose, right? Oh, Through yeah. Through a woman's legs. And she got those uh, little angel dimples or whatever it's called. Really like the watercolor of the sky. This has to be one of the most macho mangas you know it's just totally. dude guns about every 10th one is a girl <laughs> <laughs> and and dude he could do it all yes he's 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 more uh, capable than a uh, goodwill hunting <laughs> <laughs> shooting down satellites with a bow and arrow <laughs> wow that's neat what a great look super cool looks like the film strip stuff is just drawn too mm-hmm deceptively simple yeah yeah like i, I mean I, I the way that you would do it i think to get it this accurate would be to do it on some graph paper but like not the big graphs like the um four little squares that fit into the big square just a plain air painting in the mix yeah the color stuff's remarkable you know that could be right out of an anime and there's a film over top of mm -hmm. it to give you those lines this book would be impossible to edit i think so yeah, it'll take you some time to curate all that stuff. I bet you that print's so shitty. It's so <laughs> dark, you know? And then when they print it on that crappy paper. Because that's the thing that you're getting with this art book is, like, this is a very, very nice paper. Yeah. It's such a consumer culture out there that, like, you just don't see these kind of books out there. There's not that much artist edition type stuff out there and when they do make them they're very limited way more limited than us it makes sense to me you know like this is also a massive book yeah you know how many ta this is a six tank event or something that right. you could have in your in your small apartment is that baroque it's gotta be right probably we're yeah. at that we're at that era what era is that i know yeah Jeez. headshots There's the guy with the cigarette. Yep. Do you remember the cigarette part in Man Bin? I do. How he, like, dries the ink with his cigarette? <laughs> there he is, man, observing everybody's shit. I think that's from early. We saw, yeah. like, a big version of that, so to give you some what it looks like shrunk down. Super cool. What a book. Super cool. It's like... Nice. Spine. To Cal Saito Works, Gogo 13, Duke Togo, Sean Japan Book Hunter. He had, he had about three or four of them, and we all scooped them up, man. Uh, Scheme Richard scooped one up, Brian scooped one up. I was going to scoop one from him, man, but then I found this out in the wild and was like, dude, sell, sell that other one. Great book. Beautiful. Super, super cool, man. You good to go, Jimmy? Yes. Okay, Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell so that we can notify you when new videos are available. We are a daily YouTube channel, and it is possible we talked about your favorite books. So hit the magnifying glass on the front page of the Cartoonist Kayfabe YouTube channel. Give it a search for your favorite titles. Uh, if we did not 
talk about your favorite comics yet, you have to let us know in the comments what those comics are so that we can push them a little bit higher on our to-read pile uh, so that we can get to those comics uh, sooner than later in our coverage. Uh, we have a Patreon and the King Kayfabers on the Patreon. Get access to all the videos before anybody else. Mitigates the Kayfabe effect and uh, the subscription uh, by way of the Patreon. It pays for itself. The very first time uh, we talk about a book that you want to get, uh, you sleep on being a King Kayfaber. You go to the aftermarket and you realize you got to pay 5x, 10x what the book uh, is typically going for. Subscription pays for itself. Ultimately, the videos are brought to you by the books that we make, and uh, it's been a pretty fruitful year, 2023, for the Kings of Kayfabe. And uh, the Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus is out in stores right now. Uh, it's going quick. We don't have too, too many of these left uh, out there in the wild. So many were accounted for uh, for the holidays. Thank you guys very much for that. It's the best book I made to date. More than 500 pages of material, more than 150 pages of new stuff, and a lot of new artwork uh, that I created just specifically for uh, this volume. Red Room comes in three different flavors of trade paperback at this point. Anti-Social Network, Trigger Warnings, and coming to you in uh, January is Crypto Killers, uh, the third in the sequence of Red Room comics, Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit, name of the game of Red Room. Each of these is self-contained. Each of these contains four self-contained stories, so pick your poison, give it a shot, see, see if you dig it. And Marvel recently collected X-Men Grand Design uh, into a trilogy trade paperback with all of my X-Men Grand, Grand Design materials in here. Very easy, convenient way to get all of my X-Men Grand Design works. Jimmy, what do you have? Street Angel, Deadly Girl Alive, and Street Angel Princess of Poverty are my latest releases from Image Comics. These are available wherever you buy books or comics, and they collect all of my Street Angel comics, the Street Angel Princess of Poverty, everything up until Image. So it's mostly black and white line art, uh, kind of the traditional... Uh, pen and ink drawings yes. throughout there. Uh, Street Angel, Deadly Score Live, all mixed media, full color stories. Um, they're all complete stories in both books, so start with either one, whichever you can find at your local comic shop. I've also been self-publishing. True Crime Funnies collects some nonfiction stories, uh, both true crime and wrestling in nature. And you can pick that up on my website, or you can read it on patreon.com slash jimrug, along with the BW zine celebrating the black and white explosion of the 80s, and the 1986 zine celebrating the greatest year in comics history. And finally, the Hulk Grand Design, my contribution to Marvel's Grand Design series of books. This one celebrating the Hulk, and it is out of print at the publisher and distribution level. So pick this one up while you still can from your local store if they have one, because once it's out of print, it may be very hard to come by. Book sales are the most important uh, step to kind of keep the Kayfabe channel solvent and, and functioning, but there are some other ways to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Jimmy, if you let the people know. Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, mugs, hats, stickers, and lots more at our spread shop. That link is also under this video. There you have it. Many ways to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Jimmy, if you'll give the people their final marching orders, we can all be on our way. Read more comics.